How smart is ChatGPT? This is Mensa. Mensa is an international group consisting of high IQ people. And in this video, we're gonna get ChatGPT to take an IQ test so it can join Mensa as well. They note that this Mensa IQ challenge is provided for entertainment purposes only and your score will not qualify you for Mensa. But if you're pleased with your score, you might want to consider taking a properly administered and supervised IQ test. So in order to get into Mensa, you have to do it live in person. Sorry guys, you can't use ChatGPT. This IQ test was made by Mensa Norway and this online test gives an indication of general cognitive abilities represented by an IQ score of between 85 and 145, where 100 is the population average. This test is not a substitute for professional intelligent tests, such as those administered by Mensa and licensed psychologists. All right, the test consists of 35 puzzles in the form of visual patterns that must be solved within a 25 minute time limit. So we have to be fast and we can do it within the 40 messages limit that ChatGPT4 has. Participation requires neither specialized knowledge nor mathematical skills. The puzzles, which get progressively difficult, are weighted equally and you'll get one point for each correct answer. You do not get bonus points for finishing the test early, so try to manage your time optimally. Also, you are not penalized for answering incorrectly, so make a guess whenever we're unsure. For the results to be as valid as possible, make sure you're sitting in a room that is properly ventilated and free from distractions so that you can work uninterrupted for 25 minutes. If you wanna follow along and complete the test yourself, see if you'll get different answers from ChatGPT. You're gonna to have to pause the video after the question is read. Because of my fast edits, you probably won't have enough time to think and answer thoroughly, or you can just watch and follow along with me. So let's get this going. We have to select an age range and there's no one years old. Now I think 16 to 17 is a specially designed test for children. So I'm gonna select the 18 to 50, that'll be an adult test. And they give us an example. You'll see a grid of nine boxes, one of which is empty. You have to choose which of the six alternative shapes, A through F, must be placed in the empty box in order to complete the pattern that connects the shapes. As you can see, all the shapes in the grid are black and each row contains the same shape, so the correct answer is B. Got it, simple enough. Let's see if ChatGPT can get this example question right. This is Mensa GPT. The custom instruction is, task, you will be shown an image containing a test question. Answer A, B, C, D, E, or F based on what you see in the image. Don't explain your answer or respond anything except the correct answer. I'm gonna save this GPT. Let's go back to the IQ test example. I'm gonna use my snipping tool, click new, and we're gonna grab this question and then paste it into Mensa GPT. Let's see if it gets the answer. It thinks E, not a good start to the IQ test. All right, we're gonna start the test. We did an example and it got it wrong. Now I want you to make some predictions in the comments below. Is ChatGPT gonna be a super genius? High IQ, IQ 145. Is it gonna be like the population average? Is the AI dumb? Whatever you think, right below, we're gonna take the test. Let's see how close you got. Okay, question one. I'm copying the question. Let's paste it in. We're using GPT-4 Vision. Mensa GPT is reading this question and it thinks the answer is B. So let's hit B. Next, question number two. All right, pasting it in. Mensa GPT thinks A. Hit A. Question number three. I'm gonna use the snipping tool. Let's paste it in. Mensa GPT thinks E. I'm gonna click E. Okay, question four. I'm gonna copy, let's send it through. It says B, so click B. Question number five. Let's copy the question. It thinks it's E, we're gonna click E. Here is question number six. Mensa GPT thinks it's C. This is question number seven. It chooses E. Question number eight. Copy it all, let's paste it in. I hope it doesn't keep selecting B or E. Okay, this time C. This one is question number nine. Mensa GPT answers F. Let's click F. 
This is question number 10. We have E. Question number 11. Mensa GPT says F. I'm going to click F. This is question number 12. It selects C. Let's go here, click C. This is question number 13. Remember, the questions are supposed to get harder and harder. So if it had trouble with that example question, I can't even imagine what's going to happen on the later questions. It's going to get some right just by a fluke too, though. All right, answer is A. Let's click A. This is question number 14. Mensa GPT answers E. Here's E. This is question number 15. Paste it in. Send it through. It answers C. Let's click C. This is question number 16. All right, I had to start a new chat because it got an error in the past generation. Not a big deal. Each question can be taken on its own. So Mensa GPT says E. Click E. This is question number 17. It answers B. This is question number 18. Mensa GPT says E. This is question number 19. It chooses A. This is question number 20. Mensa GPT says C. Does anyone remember the Seinfeld episode where George is taking the IQ test and he's passing it outside the window to Elaine? This reminds me of that, except Elaine is chat GPT. Question number 21. Well, we reached our usage cap for GPT-4. This is going to be a problem because there's a timer on the test. We're down to four minutes, but we're going to power through here. I created a quick bubble page called IQ Test Taker. When we upload an image, it's going to make an API call to GPT-4 Turbo, specifically GPT Vision, and it's that exact same custom GPT prompt. So it's going to spit out a letter for us, and this way we'll be able to continue the test. If the timer runs out, I'll just start the test again and use all the previous answers that we got in the conversation. So we'll get to this point again. All right, let's test this out. Hope this works. Here, I uploaded the test question and it says E. Perfect. Let's click E. This is question number 22. All right, uploading question number 22. And it says E again. I refreshed the test to get some more time. Then I went back into our old conversation in ChatGPT and I answered all the questions. I think we got to question 20 within ChatGPT, and then my own app, we answered two. So now here we go, question number 23, and we got C. Question number 24, it answers C. Question number 25, it says B. Question number 26, GPT-4 says F. Let's click F. Question number 27, it answered C. Let's click C. Question number 28, it thinks the answer is B. Question number 29, we got another B. Question 30, and it thinks the answer is F. Question number 31, it says C. It's weird that it hasn't answered anything on the left side of the image, almost like it's biased towards the right side. Let's hit C. Question number 32, it says E. Question number 33, it thinks it's E, click E. Question number 34, I think I know what it's gonna score. It answers F, still no A or D. Let's click F, last question, number 35. And its last answer is B. So let's hit B, we're gonna click finish test. And the result of the IQ test, your IQ lies outside the range that this test is currently able to measure. We will be expanding this measurable range of this test as soon as we have gathered more data. So it's either a super genius above 145 or way below 85. I'm gonna guess it's below 85 from what we know here. First off, the answer was not E, it told us it was B. Let's look at question one. Very easy, the square is moving around the box. It should be in the bottom right corner. So that would be A and it said B, so it was wrong there. Question two, we got circle plus diamond circle plus, so this last one should be a diamond, should be E, and it said A, so it was wrong there too. Question three, blank circle plus, plus blank circle, circle plus should be blank. So it should be F, and it said E. So it's O for three on the easiest questions. Question number four, it's like a slider. So the slider slides to the middle, then the end, and so it should be at the bottom here we should get an F and it said B. So I'm gonna conclude that it got almost all the questions wrong unless it luckily guessed one right. So I researched the limitations of GPT-4 with vision and in the documentation, they're saying there's a lot of things that the model can't do. 
It's not good with visual elements like understanding graphs or text where colors or styles like solid, dash, or dotted lines vary. And if we go back to our test, a lot of these questions have those sort of characteristics. It's also not good at spatial reasoning. It says the model struggles with tasks requiring precise spatial localization, such as identifying chess positions. Again, all of these questions were spatial reasoning. It's bad with image shape, it's bad for counting, and it's bad with rotation. It says the model may misinterpret rotated upside down text or images. And that's exactly what these puzzles do. You're rotating images around the puzzle to get the right answer. All right, that's it for now. So pretty disappointing results. I think we learned that AI vision capabilities are not quite there yet. If you guys are interested, let me know if you want me to retake an IQ test with GPT-4, but this time only find text-based questions so it can logic and reason instead of looking at images. We might get a different result. It might be much smarter in those tasks. I think that might be cool. But for now, sorry GPT-4, I'm gonna have to remove you from Mensa.